And here you are, saint Tobias. Have fun. So we're Heritage Regional High School. My name is Emmy, And I'm Lydia. So the character of Francis is inspired by the life of Yvonne Duret. One of 14 children, he quit school to work on a fishing boat. He became a well-known boxer, also known as the Fighting Fisherman. He won many titles from middleweight to heavyweight, both in Canada and in the United States of America. Yvonne Duret was a gentleman, respected in both the boxing and wrestling world. The character of Gordon is inspired by the life of Gaston Cardinal, born in Valleyfield, Quebec on April 23, 1929. Gordon was a kind man. He served in the Navy for 21 years and had, and had a wife for 57 years and five girls. He had a love for animals and a propensity to bring them home. Together, our class, we have prepared a couple of scripts and we hope you enjoy. The character of Gordon reads his poem. <laughs> From riches to rags, how hard I fell. I live a life no one would care to tell. Dreams and visions of a world to see, yet alas, here I am, wanting to be free. I'll curse my luck again and again. I want my name to be known now and even back then. A simple life, not much else to it. I want more than this, that was my wish. But a dear friend of mine, who had what I wanted, confessed to me with words almost haunted. A house, a wife, were all he wished for. He wanted what I had, the empty feeling he felt he couldn't ignore. As I sit here and think, I begin to realize, I have everything I could ever need, no need for a guise. Overrated are money and fame. The only ones who need to know my name are those who are precious to me. And who would know that now better than me? Excerpt from scene two, Eldora and Francis's living room. Dear oh. little sis, I hope you're doing well. I'll be visiting soon and I hope to see Gordon and Yvette too. I know you've been wanting to come along on the tour with me. Although you would keep me company, I don't think this would be a good idea anymore. I hope you won't take this to heart. It was a tough choice for me as well. Sometimes it's best not to mix business with family. We both know that our town couldn't survive without you anyway. My manner and I move around a lot, from city to city, country to country, fight to fight. It's not as wonderful as it seems to be, maybe to you, but not to me. I think you're better off staying in a town that needs you. Don't worry, every fight I win, I'll be sure to send you something lovely to add to your wardrobe, just like this one. The hat you are probably already wearing comes from a small boutique in Bay St. Anne, New Brunswick. Eldora looks up from the letter and takes off the hat. Stupid hat. Eldora throws the hat across the room. She puts the letter down and starts pacing back and forth. Perfect. Just perfect. What am I going to do now? How will I explain it to Yvette, to everyone I've already told I'll be joining him? I just don't understand why he wouldn't want me on the trip with him. I could help him manage all his, his stuff and book more fights. Get him organized, you know? Eldora goes and picks up the hat, carefully smoothing it out again. We could live this glorious life together. I can't stop thinking about it. The delicious foods and deluxe hotels, the fancy boat rides on the Grand Canal in Venice, the high fashion boutiques along Champs-Élysées in Paris. I can smell it, the fresh bread and the decadent pastries. I have to watch what I eat though. I wouldn't want to ruin my fabulous figure. I just can't stay here. I'm sure he's only going through a rough time being away from home and his family and all. It'll pass. I know deep down he wants me to go. I'm his sister after all. I'll figure something out. Eldora puts the hat back on, strikes different poses. When he's in town, I'll cook him his favorite meals. He won't be able to resist after that. I can't believe he thought this hat could make up for it. Eldora admires herself in the mirror. It is beautiful, and the color really does complement my skin tone perfectly, but someday, someday I'll travel the world and buy hats everywhere I go. One for every outfit, one in every color, every shape. Fabulous hats from Europe is what I want. Forget some pokey New Brunswick boutique. Eldora strikes her final defiant pose, hands on her hips. Oh, he'll take me with him, all right. He'll just have to. She takes off the hat and walks out. <laughs> Excerpt from scene eight at the town fair. Yvette sees Eldora sitting alone on a bench. She appears to have been crying. Yvette hesitates a moment before sitting down beside her friend. The friends sit in silence for a moment. 
Oh, Eldora, why'd you lie? I... I mean, I knew you liked to, to stress your tooth at times, but this, this is more than I ever <clears throat> thought you capable of. Eldora sobs and highs, sighs heavily. Eldora, all those pretty lies you told can't get rid of the bothersome truth. Why'd you lie to me? Fear. Yvette leans back, confused by Eldora's response. I don't think it's fair. Everyone else has a beautiful family, but what about me? Has the world forgotten about Eldora Jarrell? Eldora takes out a hanky and blows her nose. You won't be alone as long as your loving friends and brother are around. Oh yes, my lovely brother. How glamorous his life is. I'm tired of being afraid. I don't want to feel like I've wasted my life on something that'll never come. That's why I wanted to go along with my brother. I need to see what else the world has to offer. This can't be all there is. If it is, then I don't want to be any part of it. I can't just sit around, Yvette. I know great things are in store for me. I just know it. Eldora gets up with sudden energy. I can't sit here and expect to find it if I'm not looking. I need to get out of here and find what it is I am looking for. Yvette stands up as well and hugs her friend. Well, until then, for now, can we just go get lemonade like old times? Eldora and Yvette giggle. Yes, all right. I suppose my future can wait a little while longer. Eldora and Yvette walk away arm in arm. <laughs> Excerpt from scene nine. Gordon is sitting on the floor with a hand of feed, holding it out to his animals. You're the only ones who understand me. You are. Are you sure about that, Gordon? Shouldn't you be going on a plane to Europe, living your luxurious life? Gordon, I want to talk. Oh, now you want to talk to me, you small town no name friend? Is this about the fair? Gordon, I didn't mean it like that. I, I just want to talk about you. About your life these past years, not about my career. You want to know about my life as a short order and a dishwasher? It was hell. I spent most of my nights sitting in the kitchen writing because no one would give me the time of day. Gordon continues feeding his birds. Do you think I wanted that? I have always wanted a bigger life. I want your life, Francis. I know everything you've accomplished. The radio broadcast, newspapers, I know it all. The books, the reviews, my town. Damn it, I know your career better than I know myself. I almost felt like I was living it there too, right along with you. Then I realized I was stuck in a small town with the same people going through the same routine. All I have to show for my life is this small town, a wife who thinks I'm crazy, these animals, and some silly poems. Want to know what I see? I see a man with a life, a real life, not jumping from hotel to hotel, living out of a suitcase. You come home to a wife who loves you despite it all. I want that, Gordon. I want that. Maybe not all the animals, but that's the life I want. Gordon stops feeding the animals and finally looks at Francis. Well, well. Now, how about we go back to the fair and you let me buy you that beer? You can beat me and shoot the cans like you always do. Gordon and Francis exit together. This was just a little sneak peek into the lives of the St. Hubert citizens, Francis, Gordon, Eldora, and Yvette. Um, our class would like to thank Fanny and Monique for helping us along the way. And we hope you enjoyed the script. Thank you for listening.